Welcome to the webinar, The Evolution of Guest Expectations and How Hotels Can Exceed the New Demands, brought to you by Stay in Touch, Fuel, and Flip.2. I'm your host, Frigola, and I'm joined by my panel of experts. First up, from Fuel, Stuart Butler. As COO of Fuel, Stuart is responsible for directing direct booking strategies for hundreds of hotels worldwide with a degree in physics and space science and systems in the background. As a cold fusion programmer and a project manager, Stuart takes a solutions mind and innovative approach to everyday marketing challenges. He is also the host of industry's number one weekly marketing podcast, the Fuel Hotel Marketing Podcast. Joining us from Stay in Touch is a product manager, Dante Sapp. Dante brings over 10 years of experience managing within hotel operations, having worn several hats throughout the years. He has an understanding of how technology is being used to manage hotels operations daily. Before joining Stay in Touch, Dante spent the past two years with Micros, installing PMS software and several years of forking uh, for Hyatt Hotels and Walt Disney World. Joining us from Flip.2 is Richard Dunbar. With 15 years of professional experience in hospitality, Richard has a deep background in revenue management, systems integrations, consumer loyalty, and building brand advocacy. Originally from South Carolina, Richard currently resides in Orlando, Florida, where he puts his knowledge to work helping hotels rethink their approach to digital marketing and distribution. Richard has a degree in economics and political science from the University of Central Florida. I want to thank our audience for joining us and encourage you all to engage in the discussion. You can use the chat box to submit your questions and comments at any time throughout the presentation. And of course, we will get to those questions at the end of the webinar. That being said, I'll quickly run through the agenda and we'll get started. We'll begin the discussion by addressing the evolution and the hotel guest expectations. Our presenters will discuss the importance of knowing your guests and different differentiating your property, how to manage expectations during the guest stay and enhance the guest experience, how to enhance your traditional post stay to rekindle your guest's favorite moments, and build long-term loyalty. And to wrap up the presentations, each presenter will give their final thoughts. We'll then get to the audience questions and comments thereafter. So let's get started. Before we get to our first discussion point, I'd like our audience to take part in two poll questions. The first poll question is, does your hotel have a strategy in place to engage and connect with guests from search to stay to post stay? All right, I'm closing the poll now and launching the results. Does your hotel have a strategy in place to engage and connect with guests from search to stay to post stay? 33% of you said yes, 39% said somewhat, 22 said not really, and 6% said not at all. So some of you guys have a real focus there, um, but some people still need a little help in that area, and that's what our presenters are here for. All right, going into the next question, which area is your primary focus for 2017? Upgrading PMS software, improving mobile website experience, doing a better job telling my brand story, or reducing reliance on OTAs and driving more direct bookings? Give you guys another minute and 30 seconds to answer this question and I'll launch the results. I want to get into the first discussion point, understanding the evolution and the guest expectation. Uh, it's important for hotels to not just know that there's a change in the way that guests are experiencing hotels in their travel, but to understand how to address those changes. So with that said, Richard. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about extending the uh, interaction through post day. So we're going to look at how the uh, traditional post day experience is actually devoid of, of something that's really fundamental in our industry, which is hospitality. So we'll talk a bit about that and then focus on um, how it's more important to nurture and extend the relationship with the guests rather than just kind of sending out a survey and sort of ending things right there, which is a little bit abrupt and, and lacking a bit in personality. All right, great. And Dante, you want to talk a little bit about how hotels can understand the evolution guest expectations and how to address it? Sure, sure. What I hope to, to achieve is to, to give you some insight in how um, this growing industry of mobile applications and, and, and just mobile capability can apply um, to enhancing your level of service uh, within the hotel operations. 
Um, I know for me personally, if, if there's an app or a service that they use, Uber, uh, banking, uh, you know, utilities, if that app is quote unquote crappy, then um, my faith in that company will waver a bit because I just feel like in this day and age, mobility is key. So that, that company has to place that emphasis on uh, creating a mobile app that can give me what I need. All right, and we have Stuart back on. So uh, go ahead, Stuart, the floor is yours. Thanks, Free. Uh, yeah, so I would like to say that, you know, obviously we live in a very on-demand world nowadays. We're all used to things like Netflix and one-day shipping uh, but, and voice search and a lot of things. I'm going to talk about that in a little while, but I really feel like people misunderstand what's going on. You know, millennials get a bad reputation and get the blame for all of the world's problems when really I think it's a symptom of technology. It's just that millennials have adopted that technology faster than anyone else. We, you know, we see a lot of different trends happening in this industry, one of which is that the number of searches being made by consumers is decreasing and they're becoming more and more discerning. They're starting their journey of booking further down the funnel than they used to because they're becoming more savvy with technology and things like that. So with that discerning nature of the guests, we as hoteliers have to do a better job of providing the right information in the right way on the right device at the right time for that discerning guest. So that's kind of what I'm going to talk about in a second. All right. Thank you guys. You've set the stage pretty nicely here and Stuart, don't go anywhere because you're next. Your presenter slides are up. Knowing your guests and differentiating your property is the key to gaining more direct bookings. Right. So I'm, what I'm going to talk about is really the, the need to focus on the fundamentals. You know, what the other guys are going to talk about is really, really important when you talk about the relationship and nurturing people. But what I want to focus on here is really hotel website 101, uh, which I feel like a lot of people in the industry are just not doing a great job of. So back to what I was just talking about with how people have changed. So this is a timeline that, you know, in our office, we were talking about all the different things that we interact with on a daily basis or what we have interacted with and how it's evolved over the last 20 or so years. And when you look at all these big brands and big products, all the way back to American America Online back in, you know, the late 80s to early 90s and Netscape, and then we move forward to now we've got Amazon Echoes in Google Homes in our, our house. We know what we want, we know how to get it, we get it right then, we don't have to wait, and this is how society lives today. This is, this is no longer the situation where 10, 15, 20 years ago where I'd have to call a hotel to get the rates in the hotels had a really tough try time communicating to the guests what they had to offer, how much inventory they had and availability they had. So we really need to gear up for the reality of how we live today. So we recently did a study in conjunction with Flip2 and we surveyed about 2,000 leisure travelers and we asked them a bunch of questions about how they find websites and what they do when they get to websites and what influences them. So I'm going to go through a couple of data points from that and then kind of weave that into making a point at the end. So next slide please. All right, so the good news is you as a hotel have a really good percentage probability of converting a guest if they land on your website. If you're in their decision set then we know that a guest is only looking at four or five different hotel websites. Now you've seen other data that will say that's a much higher number, but they're looking at click stream. So they're looking at people going for, to OTAs, to the trip advisors, and even to CNN and other sites in between that shopping process. What we're talking about, and this was reported by the guests, they go into an average of 4.6 different hotel websites when they're making the purchase decision over a period of about 26 days. So they don't want to do a lot of work. They're going to narrow that field down really, really quickly. You just have to do a good job of convincing them that you are the right property. Next slide, please. So what influences that decision and how can we nudge people through the funnel? So we asked that question to these respondents and overwhelmingly number one most influential factor when making that decision was the hotel website itself followed by word of mouth which I would argue in today's society a lot of times means social media especially with Facebook and people see and hear what their friends are doing on social media and that influences them just like 
back in the day it used to be face to face conversations uh, and then as we drop down this is when we get into things like meta searches and review sites and the search engines and online travel but it's it's really key to remember that your website is the number one most influential factor over and above these other guys so why is it then that the OTAs are doing a better job than hotels at convincing guests to book with them so next slide so one of the things we know is that guests, even though they're not looking at many different sites, they are spending a lot of time doing their research still. And you know, from our study, it showed that a guest on average is coming back to your hotel website 3.4 times during that 26 day period. And they're spending almost 30 minutes in total to make that decision on your actual website. So they're looking at a lot of information. They really do care about the decision they're making. It is a big decision for them and for their family or for their business travel, whatever it is they're traveling for. So we know that, yes, they're looking at a few properties, but in addition, they're really spending time to make sure that it is the right property for them. Next slide, please. So the key to this is that the hotel website is the most important influential factor in the booking decision process. And when we think about why that is, you know, it, it's where they're getting the truth, it's where they're getting a lot of information, but all too often hotels are falling short. You know, we know that 83% of people are not going to make a booking without first reading a review. So if your hotel website does not have reviews embedded on the website, then you're basically saying to 83% of people that come to your site, well, sorry, we don't have all the information you leave. You need. You have to leave our site and go to potentially one of my competitors, an OTA or a trip advisor, where you're not only getting exposed to my other channel rates, but you're also getting exposed to my actual competition because I'm not willing to provide you with the information that you tell it clearly telling me that you need and incidentally you know we have this debate about well would reviews on my own website be uh, viewed as authentic as they are on say a trip advisor or third party we found that 95 percent of people trusted reviews on the hotel website so the vast majority of people are going to believe what they read regardless of the source next slide please so what are some of the other factors? We, we know that reviews are really important. This is the order that the, our survey respondents came back and told us the factors were. So price obviously is a no-brainer. That's, that's critical to the majority of people's decision. Not everyone, but a lot of people are going to be price sensitive. Location is critical. So where you are in vicinity to an, an, a landmark in your property, in your uh, destination, or wait, whether you're oceanfront or second row, things like that. Uh, the room size and the layout, where they're actually going to stay and sleep. They want to see that. They want to understand it before they get there. They don't want any surprises. Special offers and deals, people always want to feel like they're getting something a little bit extra. The amenities, this is especially really important for leisure travelers. When you when you're traveling as a family, you want kid activities and pools and things like that. And then obviously, we already touched on reviews and testimonials. So knowing this, your website should be catering to all these questions in providing answers to all of those questions. So let's look at uh, the next slide. I think we skipped the slide there, Free. There we go. All right, so this is a mobile view of booking.com. So these do a great, they do a great job, probably better than any of the other OTAs of understanding that, those challenges, the, the questions that the individual guest is going to have when making a booking. So if we look at the, the, the previous six things and we line it up with this site, we see that they're doing a lot of good things to push people through the com conversion funnel. They're providing a lot of forward pressure. And what I mean by that is every single obstacle that the guest is going to have in their head, they're doing a good job of removing that obstacle so that the guests can move forward and not backwards in the funnel. So we start by looking at offering choice. So they're giving the guests you know, options related to not just properties, but in some cases, what's the best rate versus what's the most popular rate versus what's the best value rate, things like that. They're uh, showing 
things that create fear in the guest. Fear of missing out is a great psychological motivator for a guest. So showing things like, well, you, you're too late. You just missed this one uh, property, but there's another one available, but guess what? You might miss out unless you hurry fast because there's only a certain number of rooms left. Um, they're providing social proof in the forms of you know, review scores, but also how many other people have looked at or booked a room in the recent time frame. They're giving reassurance, oh, you don't have to pay now, you can pay at the property, or free cancellations, there's no ob obligation there. So they're, they're alleviating a lot of those fears. And then they're humanizing the, the experience by not just showing a review score, but also putting things like very good or wonderful. They're putting humanized terms to what can be a very black and white in, in digital kind of information. And they're really answering every single question that the guest is going to have through that booking process. So next slide, please. So the challenge that I'm throwing out to you that are listening to this webinar is to really look at your website from three critical perspectives or angles. The first is to look at it from a content perspective and, and ask yourself the question, is your website really the best resource that exists on the internet for your property? Does it really provide information that helps a guest make a decision and does it differentiate you from the competition. And when I say competition, that's not just the property next door, that's also the OTAs. And if you can't say definitively yes, then you have some work to do. You have to go and work with your team and build that content so that you have the best resource available and that you know that people that come to your site are going to find everything they need and not need to go to an OTA or TripAdvisor before they make that booking. The next angle I want you to look at your site is the technical side. And this is one that's often overlooked, but is it real? Is your website really fast? And not only is that good for the guest, it's also great for the search engines. Is it easy to use? Have you physically gone to your website with the mindset of a guest and tried to go through the booking process on a mobile device and on a desktop device and on a tablet? Have you tried to break it? Have you tried everything you can to come up with all the scenarios that a guest is going to have when they're trying to use your website? And make sure that your booking engine is fully integrated in site, that you're not throwing red flags up, that it looks and feels the same as the first page and the last page. And then finally, the last angle I want you to look at your website is the psychological side. So thinking back to our example with booking.com, does your website really answer all of the possible questions that may prevent a guest from booking? And does it reassure them that they're making a great decision? And does it eliminate that doubt and that fear and that potential of buyer's remorse? So if you do those three things well, what you're going to see is you're going to reduce your reliance on the OTAs because people are not going to just select your property, but they're going to select your property on your own website. They're not going to be tempted to go to a third party channel and book the same rate or a different rate because you've now answered all their questions. And this is where you really start to build a relationship with your guests. All right. Thank you, Stuart, for giving us some great insight as to how important it is to connect with your guests when they're in that search phase, when they're coming to your website, you have a prime opportunity to engage them, answer their questions, and then convert them into actual guests. So now moving on to Dante from Stay in Touch is going to be speaking about managing expectations during the guest stay and refining the guest service experience. Good afternoon. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about is, is how to enhance or refine the level of service or guest, that guest experience that you provide to your guests. Um, when I was thinking about how to, to, to kind of break this down, I thought that the first level should be is to identify, if you don't already know, um, but to identify the types of travelers that you have. Because each type of traveler um, is going to respond uh, to uh, technology, mobility, um, the interactions that you have between the two, um, they're going to respond and, and perceive and receive that differently. Um, I think that it can be broken up into, into four large groups. There are uh, your jet setters. Your jet setters are going to be your experienced travels. Um, they're dependent upon mobility. They're going to be highly exposed to uh, multiple platforms or different types of mobility. 
Um, and they're somewhat cost conscious. They're, they're not really afraid to spend money as long as that value is there. And the Jet Center can encompass everything from millennials to uh, baby boomers to uh, young adults. It's, it's everyone that's used to being on the go. Um, next, you would have your family travels. And your families are going to be a, a mixed level of experience um, from the parents down to the kids, just depending on that exposure that they've had. Um, they're going to be restricted as to what they can do and what they can uh, what they can obtain. Um, whatever you're using in, in order to enhance mobility, enhance guest service from a mobile standpoint, it has to engage the entire family. It can't be something that's geared towards adults or something that's geared towards the children only. It really has to encompass that entire family in order for them be, to be percept perceptive to what you're trying to provide. Uh, and they're often budget bus travelers. So um, whatever you're providing or suggesting, it can't really cost a lot more than what they're already spending um, because they are typically traveling on a budget. Um, business travelers are going to be tech savvy. Um, whatever you offer has to be streamlined. It has to save time. It, it cannot interrupt um, their floor, their plan, or what they have to achieve in that day. And they tend to be least cost conscious. Um, just because they're not spending their own personal money, it's a little bit more geared towards business. And then last, we have our senior travelers. They're going to be late bloomers in technology. Uh, in today's day and age, a lot of your senior travelers at least have smartphones. Um, they at least may have uh, Facebook so that they can catch up or keep in contact with their families. Um, they have some understanding of how mobility applies um, to business, to travel, and to themselves. Um, but they're like bloomers. They're also eager to learn. Um, you have to engage seniors in order to drive participation. So it has to be something that includes your staff and includes that piece or that engagement piece in order to be able to drive service by using mobility. Um, and they're going to require the most personal assistance. So if your property is geared to more senior travelers, you have to make sure that you have people available to kind of assist with that mobile integration into the level or the type of service that you're providing, or you may lose their interest in, in, in that piece of your service. And that comes from just from having a rich understanding of your market um, and your travelers. Um, understanding your travelers' preferences. Mobility offers a real-time glimpse into our customers' lives. Um, mobility is going to proactively, and, and that's a key word there, it's proactively engaging customers and building their experience. Mobile websites and platforms such as TripAdvisor, Facebook, Yelp, Instagram offer a real-time look into a hotel guest's expectations, needs, and challenges while traveling. Mobility as a means to anticipate your guest's needs and expectations throughout their stay is key in that. It is, once you're offering mobility, you know, what are you doing with that? Um, mobility engages customers in building their stay experience by promoting participation. It promotes ownership, and you can do that through a hotel-centric app. It builds a connection uh, between the user, the brand, and the company. Um, it also lets you collect necessary data and details on that guest, whether it's um, for profile or for a specific day or a specific stay, um, so that you can use those expectations to anticipate their needs on arrival. Um, one story that comes into mind about mobile platforms is when I was traveling for work in Europe. Um, I landed in, uh, in, in, in Heathrow and my luggage wasn't there. I had no cell phone, I had no way to call. I was attempting or planning to buy a SIM card for Europe, but I had no way of really contacting Delta about my luggage because outside of the U.S. luggage services handled by a third party co uh, contact. So I was able to get onto the Wi-Fi in the airport and I did a search, and I noticed that Delta had a Twitter account. And I read a few reviews that they actively responded to their Twitter account. So I was able to tweet Delta, let them know that I was in UK without a phone, let them know that I had lost my luggage and where I was in the airport. I was able to get a response back, instructions on how to process that lost luggage, what amount of money was due to me, and actually a staff member came and found me in the airport. So. By offering that mobile platform, Delta was able to exceed my expectations, and they were able to meet my needs and my challenges while traveling. So, you know, really embracing mobility from a hotel standpoint is crucial to being able to increase the level of service that we provide. Um, th this next one I'll, I'll touch on, um, really in, uh, capturing those mobile moments and those opportunities to engage our guests in mobility is really important. Um, and, and the best way to do that is through a smartphone. And this is a pretty cool, um, 
quote that I found from Ted Horner, who's a, a hospitality consultant and has been for about 40 years now, uh, smart, smartphones and the proliferation of apps give us the power to do so many things from the palm of our hands. The hospitality industry has embraced apps to the point that mobility is an essential part of how we communicate um, with guests and vice versa. And those can be broken down into to, uh, four or five key points. Discover, explore, buy, use, ask, and engage. And I found this chart on Forrester.com, and it really breaks down how hotels currently use mobility to engage, discover, um, ask guest questions, sell things to people or to our guests, and encourage them to use our services and products. So it shows us what we do well and where we need to go and what we don't do well. So um, take some time to look at this and think how you can apply it into your own operation and how you can use what you currently have um, to engage your guests or uh, think of how you can build upon mobility uh, by using this chart. And now creating a mobile experience. And, and with creating a mobile experience, this is how we do it today currently within our industry. Um, we offer some really cool uh, and innovative ways to, to get our guests involved within their check-in experience because we know that now, day and age, uh, everybody wants to be involved and everything is hands-on. So, you know, from the staff perspective um, and from a customer stand, uh, perspective, um, there, there are some key components, some key things that are, sorry, some offerings that we have currently today, self-service check-in, mobile housekeeping, um, guest facing check in and check out, and in room mobile solutions. And each of these can apply to a certain type of traveler. They can cross over to different types of traveler. So when it comes to self service check in, you're going to find that your business travelers are very uh, uh, aware of how this works and they're very eager to have a hotel that offers that. From kiosk check in to mobile check in and check out um, to email offers for early check in, um, upsells, upgrades. Um, you can see in the diagram mobile key or using the key to open their door. And you can tie all of this in by offering a hotel app that allows or gives your guests access to that. Um, mobile housekeeping, you're going to find that your seniors will be really uh, uh, wowed by that if, if their room attendant is cleaning their room and they need more towels or there's a light bulb out or if they need some furniture in their mini bar and your room attendant can just use their iPad to request all of those things. It also gives your staff the ability to update rooms real time, um, decreases the amount of time or factors that increase room readiness to check in. Um, family, they're going to be really uh, interested in in-room offerings, um, uh, such as being able to stream TV shows on smart TVs using Hulu and Netflix. Your guest set, your jet centers are going to be really interested in your guest facing uh, check in and check out because it's innovative, it's familiar, it puts the 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 power in their hand and in your hand, and it also promotes socializing. Everything that we do starts with mobile because mobile is our because our audience is mobile, and that comes from Josh Harmon, who's the director of marketing in PR Miami's Fountain Blue Resort, which is one um, of our customers that uses mobility. Um, jet setters uh, from receiving an early check-in check-out offer two days before arrival to having an iPad in the room that allows them to order room service. That also ties into families as well and to business travelers. Families from receiving a late checkout offer, offering more time within the room, uh, to an integrated app that allows them to stream um, their children's favorite cartoons on TV while the parents get ready for dinner. Business travelers to downloading mobile apps, identifying preferences, saving them time and keeping them on time. Um, for our seniors, our hotel, uh, by offering hotel details um, by a mobilized delivery method to help them uh, be engaged in what's going on at the property. And then these are ways that mobile solutions apply to each traveler. Um, and I really think if you can encompass some of that, that you can really increase the level of service that you provide to your, your guests and to your staff members through mobility. All right, thank you so much for that, Dante. Really understanding uh, your guest really gives you an opportunity to use mobility to attract not just their interest, but to understand how they want to be served and to give them a choice of service. All right, so moving on to Richard. Uh, this next topic is enhancing your traditional post day to rekindle your guests' favorite moments and build long-term loyalty. Richard? Yeah, thanks for that. So, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at what post day looks like today and what we kind of envision post day could look like to better infuse hospitality and extend the relationship with the guests. The <clears throat> 
post day process as it exists today generally consists of a, of a survey. So you leave the hotel, you receive an email from the hotel, there's usually a thank you note, there's a survey attached to that, and the survey serves a purpose and there's nothing wrong with that survey in and of itself, but with that being sort of the last touch point that the hotel has with the guest, um, it, it really kind of, things kind of fall short. Um, it's purely transactional and it's immediately following one of the most experiential things these people are going to do maybe for the entire year. This could be the only vacation that they get to take this year or maybe even for a couple of years. They're just coming off of this great experiential high and then they immediately go into, okay, fill out some bubbles and type in some stuff and tell us how the experience was. Um, so there's not a lot of personality in that. Um, and when it's done, there's no real inspiration or motivation to engage with the brand any further. Once you've done this survey, the survey is over and you kind of go back to your life. And I mean, <clears throat> we've all been on vacation before and we all know what it feels like to leave vacation and, and go back into the office. Those first couple days can be a little rough. Now, in comparison, when you look at the option to share and capture stories from guests, all of a sudden now you've created this great experiential opportunity for the guest to continue engaging with the brand. So when you look at sharing and when you look at bubbling up the guest story, you're encouraging the guest to actually relive some of the best moments or maybe even it's just one particular moment from their stay that was really that thing that spoke to them the most while they were there. Um, it's also a really powerful tool for further connecting and linking the, the brand or the hotel as the one who facilitates those moments. You know, a lot of times in the stories that we see the guests submitting through our platform, it's oftentimes not about the hotel. And that's great because really people are, are not traveling to destinations because of the hotel. They're traveling to the destination because of the destination. They're there because there's something they want to do. Maybe it's a, a family reunion or, uh, you know, taking the family to go do something or a husband and wife getting away or something along those lines. So it's really important to kind of give people an outlet to, to share that and, and rekindle that and keep that going. Um, and it, it's, a, it's a great way to create an opportunity for this guest to naturally share something about their experience with their hotel and with their friends. Now, when it comes to storytelling, this is what I want to spend the, the rest of this talking about. Um, there's a great quote here from Robert McKee. He does, a, he does some really great work um, with, uh, with his story seminars. Definitely recommend checking it out. Um, the key thing with storytelling is to, to keep in mind the human brain is naturally hardwired for storytelling. It's the way that we've communicated since the beginning of time. It's built into our minds. It's built into how we, how we integrate into society and how we talk to each other. Um, there's actually been some really interesting uh, research in neuroscience that's shown that the human brain makes very little distinction between reading about an experience and actually encountering it in real life. And when you think about the, the implications of something like that, the power of storytelling really kind of jumps out and makes itself clear. Um, and this doesn't even take imagery into account. Once you start factoring in images along with words, along with the fact that maybe the person who's telling you the story is someone that you're very close to, maybe a close friend or a family member, um, it can really enhance that experience and really take that person to, to that place, either back to that place or sort of uh, living it vicariously through, through a friend. So this is an example of a guest story. Uh, in this particular case, the guest name is, uh, is Jason. Um, he had taken his son to, uh, to stay at the uh, South Seas Resort, and they had gone fishing. And so this was the story that he shared after that was finished. So you have this great photo of him and his son fishing, which by itself is interesting, but it doesn't tell you a lot until you combine that with what Jason had to say. So fishing with the little guy at the world-famous Redfish Pass on the northern tip of South Seas, this is a picture and moment I'll remember for a lifetime. So how do you actually go about using this story to win? The first step in doing that is you need to make this image the focal point of future communication. So this is Jason's favorite moment. And so anytime you're able to share this with Jason again, it's always going to um, elicit an emotional response from him. You're always going to win by using this story with Jason. Um, the next thing, uh, next method in how to use this is you want to make sure that you're keeping marketing speak to an absolute minimum. Um, this type of communication is really about building relevance and building a relationship. As soon as you start injecting marketing into that, you're going to diminish that, not just in the eyes of whoever it is you're sharing it with, but also in Jason's eyes when he sees your message and you're starting to turn that into you know, a marketing pitch. 
all of a sudden that that story may not resonate as well with Jason as it as it could have. And then lastly, there there's a real com, uh, emotional connection here that no deal based marketing is ever going to be able to touch. And the best part is going back to what I was saying before, the hotel is at the centerpiece of this conversation. So you're able to connect with people, not just Jason, but others on an emotional level that your deal-based marketing, your offers, your promotions, those types of things, those don't connect in the same way with the guest. Now, stories from guests aren't just effective at building and continuing a relationship with the guest. They're actually highly effective at capturing hearts and minds of potential guests as well. Um, so here's just three examples and a, and a quote from an article from the Harvard Business Review that we really like. Companies that are active in making their customers partners and share in that value, those are the ones that tend to win. So stories are a far more uh, relatable form of communication than your typical marketing speak, and we talked a little bit that, about that on the last one. Um, but as I also noted, it sets the stage in the person's mind for an emotional experience that belongs to them. It's something that they can relate to, it's something that they can either look forward to or anticipate, and that's very, uh, very powerful. Um, it also serves to uh, humanize the brand, and I think Stuart uh, talked a little bit about this um, during his piece, but any time that you can do that, you're, you're able to make it easier for the guest or the potential guest to connect with you on a deeper level. And these are the types of things that some of the very best brands in the world, even outside of hospitality just in general, these are the things that, um, one of the things that helps to make them as successful as they are. They're able to connect with their, with their customers on a deeper level because they've been able to humanize themselves. People want to do business with people. They don't necessarily want to do business with uh, organizations. Um, and lastly, it also it creates an opportunity to connect with the guest and stand out during the inspiration phase. Now, the inspiration phase is hugely important, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. It's hugely important because that's an area right now where the big guys, and by that I mean like OTAs and meta search sites, this is an area where they've actually struggled, and it's also an area where they're not currently spending billions of marketing dollars to compete. So if you're an independent hotel and you're looking to stand out, you're looking to reduce OTA dependency, drive more direct bookings, you need to be competing at the time of inspiration and less at the time of transaction because that's where companies like, say, Expedia, for instance, are spending close to $2 billion a year competing for that guest. So that takes us into inspiration. And I just wanted to share a couple examples of hotels um, that we've seen that do this really well. Um, and full disclosure, these guys are not our customers. So um, you know, storytelling is really a great way to allow hotels and brands to compete during that inspiration phase far ahead of the transaction, as I was just saying, um, because the transaction is where everybody else wants to spend their money. So the first example I have here is the, the Iron Horse Hotel. Um, this is their homepage. What's great about this is if you notice, you're not getting hit with deals when you land on this page. There's actually nothing on here that speaks to any kind of deal whatsoever. What they're trying to do here is they're trying to win your interest with the experience and not with a price tag. And so what that means is if you're consuming that content, you're consuming uh, what that experience could be and building up that anticipation, when it comes time to actually see, okay, how much is it going to cost me to stay at the Iron Horse, price isn't as important at that point. I mean, price is always going to be a factor, but if you can talk about price more towards the end of the transaction and less towards the front, you have a better chance to win that guest sooner, and you also have a chance to have more control over your pricing. If you notice in the very center, they're featuring stories very prominently, and also uh, just below the hero image on there, you notice they have a little, an interesting little piece I noticed where they have the date they were built versus the date they were established. And so this goes back to humanizing the brand. It shows character and it's inviting the guest to be a participant in this story. And then you have the Airbnb example. Now Airbnb is the one that really everyone in the industry is talking about today because they're essentially becoming one of the largest hospitality brands in the world and they don't own a single piece of property. So what they're actually doing in this example is they're crowdsourcing stories to support their brand. They're allowing their Airbnb hosts to be the ones that are telling these stories, um, which in turn reflect the stories that the individuals enjoying those experiences are also telling. Now this puts Airbnb more towards the back of the conversation and it promotes the individuals, whether the hosts or the guests, it promotes them as the stars. They're the ones who stand out. They're the ones that you're focusing on. You're hearing their story. And most importantly, it's positioning the experience 
as the centerpiece of the interaction, which is really, again, going back to the Iron Horse example, that's really what you're looking for. Focus on the experience first, first and do the selling there. So in terms of takeaways and how you can start telling your story, a um, few immediate takeaways here. Um, when you're looking at your uh, marketing channels, are you infusing content that's telling a story? Are you selling the dream or are you selling a checklist? And be really honest about this. Ask yourself if you're focused on what it is that makes your property special, what it is that makes your destination special, why it is people will want to stay with you, or are you more focused on just rattling off a list of amenities and saying, we've got this, we've got this, we've got this, and by the way, we cost this much. And then shift to creating more meaningful value and stop relying on deal-based marketing because it doesn't build any long-term brand affinity. And that's, that's really where you're going to win. You're going to win, you're going to beat the OTAs in terms of that market share and direct hotel business by building long-term brand affinity. And you have to do that by appealing to the guest at an emotional level. And then for a few advanced takeaways, keep in mind, and we see this a ton uh, in, in what we do, coupons don't count as content. So if you're doing a content marketing strategy or active on social media, Coupons are not content. Um, if you're expecting, uh, if you're executing well, then you're actually going to be creating memories for your guests that they'll want to capture and want to share. So they'll be the ones who help you drive that content marketing strategy. Um, and be careful not to treat everyone the same. So you're going to want to use appropriate calls to action. There are plenty of different types of people coming to your website. Stuart actually touched on this in, in the website study piece that he covered. Um, you need to understand the types of people that are coming and you need to take those folks down a path to becoming a future guest and to nurture, nurture them by understanding who they are and engaging with them properly. And also remember, mobile first, super important. Most of the inspiration phase is done via mobile and Americans specifically are spending a massive amount of time on their mobile devices daily. So if you're not mobile first, you're, you're going to have some problems. All right, thank you so much for that, Richard. And I really like how you tied in uh, bringing in guests, guests, but also letting them be the advocates for your hotel. You know, let them tell their story, let them put their experience to the forefront, which only helps your own, you know, your own property. All right, with that said, we've got the final takeaways here. I want to give each presenter an opportunity to give their final thoughts, and then we will move over to the audience questions. Dante, you want to go ahead and, and give your final thoughts? Sure. Um, kind of the the, the summary. Uh, to, 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 to my bit is mobility has altered our expectations of every experience and interaction. Creating a mobile experience is essential for hotels. Uh, mobility is life, it, it's reality. So in order to continue to reach and connect with your guests, you have to adopt mobility first. All right, Stuart? My big piece of advice is to try to help your guest and not sell your guest. So tying into what Ricky said, you're making sure they have a great experience on the website and you know, pro just provide the best, most relevant, most useful resource possible on the internet that exists for your property. Richard, final thoughts? Yeah, so easy. Your guests are great storytellers. Let them do it. Let them be the ones to tell the story. They'll become an extension of your marketing. They'll do a lot of your work for you, but you have to encourage them and give them the tools to do it. All right. Again, I want to thank uh, my presenters. Um, I'm going to jump into a couple of audience questions, uh, and then we'll get moving. Uh, first up, Stuart. This is one question uh, addressed to you. Should I have a responsive site or a separate mobile desktop site? Yeah, I mean, I think for a lot of reasons it, it makes sense now in today's world to have a, a responsive site. I mean, from a management standpoint, it's just a lot easier for you to maintain one set of code and one set of content. Uh, but then from a technical side, it can be a lot faster and, and uh, you know, Google likes it better if it's responsive. And then in addition, there are so many different devices, you don't know how wide someone's screen is going to be on desktop, whether they're going to have their mobile device in, in uh, portrait or landscape mode. So there's a lot of nuances to how someone's going to view your content. So we always advise people to, to have a fully responsive, adaptive design that is going to morph automatically to the experience, but remain consistent because one thing we do know is that guests aren't just looking at your property website on one device. They're jumping from their mobile phone to their tablet to their desktop and back and forth. So you want to make sure it's a very consistent, seamless, frictionless experience across all those devices. 
All right, Dante, this one is addressed to you. Uh, how have you personally experienced mobility being used by a hotel, and what impact did it have uh, on the traveler? Um, you know, I, I can think from a uh, staff member or an operations standpoint, I was part of a hotel property that um, used iPads for check-in. It was probably one of the first hotel brands to do it. Um, and just kind of going through that evolution and that experience and seeing what it did to guest service as a whole uh, what was pretty amazing. We were able to untether ourselves from the front desk and really create some special moments for um, our guests checking in by being able to be mobile, um, whether it's checking curbside inside of a room, you're dealing with the distraught guest, you can pull them away uh, you know, fr from that busy environment and really, really engage them on a personal level. Um, so I think that it has its benefits, uh, especially for staff members. All right, uh, and Richard, this one's for you. What's one quick tactical application for integrating guest stories into uh, my content marketing strategy? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. Um, you know, you can do a lot with guest stories. It depends on how rich your content strategy is. But if um, if you want to kind of focus and narrow it down a little bit, people tend to focus on social. So I'll, I guess I'll go there. Um, if you've not done or tried Facebook ads at this point, it's definitely worth giving it a shot. At least do a little research on it and, and understand it. Um, they're really easy to set up. You can do some pretty remarkable um, targeting with those. So if you have good guest stories and you have some context to go with those, kind of like some of the things I shared in, in, my, uh, in my presentation, you can actually uh, use that context to steer how you do your segmentation and targeting in those. Um, and it makes for a really compelling ad when you can put a picture in front of somebody um, that reflects something that you know that they're interested in and maybe there's even folks in the picture who are of a like maybe a similar demographic if you can match things up at that level um, you can you can have some some really effective ads uh, very quickly we're going to stick with you here Richard uh, what are some examples of where you're seeing hotels missing opportunities to better engage with guests post stay um, you know I think where I would go with that is Hotels tend to, post day hotels tend to focus on, if you take the survey out, they tend to focus on the uh, marketing side of things. So, you know, 30, 60, 90 days after, um, after someone leaves, they get a, a marketing message of some kind from the hotel. And it's typically like, hey, you know, hope you enjoyed your stay. Please come and stay with us again. Here's this discount or that discount. It's almost always deal driven. Um, a lot of times what hotels are doing is they're, they're measuring what the uptake is on that type of messaging. So they're saying, hey, I was able to send out this many emails and I booked this many room nights because of it. Um, but what no one's really looking at is how much burn is taking place. And I don't mean like unsubscribes because that's easy to measure, but you know, are, 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 is your message so off topic or off point in some cases that your audience doesn't even listen anymore and and honestly you know I personally I feel it's worse that they don't listen versus unsubscribing at least they unsubscribe you know you're not wasting their time anymore but if they're if they're getting your message and they're just not paying attention to it or they're deleting it your odds of winning them back at any point in the future are really really low so you, you really have to focus on the nature of the message who's receiving it should they be receiving it those types of things and kind of think about the other side of that funnel, you know, let's not burn people, let's give them stuff they care about. And Stuart, this question, the last one is for you. Uh, if I have a mobile site, do I also need a mobile app? Yeah, I think the short answer is yes. I think they perform a very different function. Uh, you know, when you look at a mobile app, I think the biggest advantage is obviously the addressable nature of the guest. So now you have direct method to communicate with your guest wherever they are, especially during the stay where I think it's, it's critical and often overlooked that you can communicate with your guest to check with them that you know you're meeting their expectations that if they have any challenges during the stay, you know can you address it before they leave and, and leave a big a, a negative review. So I think overall they perform a different function. We don't see data yet that suggests that guests are using their mobile app to research and book yet. I think that'll come, but I think certainly an app as a utility that you offer the, the property to help improve the experience, whether that be, you know, Dante mentioned mobile locks uh, or, or requesting information or requesting new towels or whatever it be, but most importantly, the communication, one-to-one -one communication. I think absolutely all hotels should be embracing mobile apps in addition to their mobile website. 
All right, with that said, I want to thank our panelists uh, that does it for today's webinar, The Evolution and Guest Experience and How Hotels Can Exceed and Address Those New Demands. So to the audience, I want to thank you guys again for joining us today. Please send any additional questions or comments you have to info at stayintouch.com or feel free to hop on or, or reach out directly to our panelists, um, Stuart, Dante, uh, Richard, that's the information there. Uh, the webinar recording and the presentation will be available to all attendees uh, and non-attendees within 24 hours. So again, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Have a good day. <laughs>